<laughs> All right, guys. Hey, as many of you guys probably know, I bought a Tesla. Yeah, Model 3. Um, Absolutely love the car. It is my first foray into the EV market. It's been great. However, <laughs> you have to uh, hook that guy up to the charger and apparently it charges your car. So uh, luckily I, I have like 200 miles on there. We're just going to uh, work for the day. So uh, should be a problem. Well, uh, yeah, good morning everybody. Uh, it is about eight o'clock. We're uh, heading to the airport. We have a check-in time uh, right around 8.30. So we got to get to it, but welcome. Sorry there wasn't a video last week. Uh, it was doing hiring all week. So there was, there was absolutely no flying. And you know, I like to keep these fresh for you guys. So uh, today we're just doing a turn. We're gonna go to Denver, down to Houston, and back over to Phoenix. Uh, the big problem leg, which I, you know me, I like to look the day before, kind of see what's going on with the weather, is gonna be Denver. Denver right now is uh, one half mile with freezing drizzle, 200 overcast. So, all right, crew, let's go do this. Get it to never going back. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Get it to never going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Here's one of the good things about uh, now having an EV vehicle. Again, I'm a beginner. You guys tell me what all the uh, great things, if you Tesla owners out there, uh, I'm still a rookie at this. So, the one thing I do like. I could drive in the carpool lane without getting pulled over and getting a $400 ticket. So that to me was worth the price of admission. And the car is super fun to drive. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like having a Ferrari 488 uh, just without the expensive price tag. <laughs> and uh, the autopilot's pretty cool too, uh, self-drive. But anyways, this is a flying channel, not a car channel. So, hey, let's get to work. Man, nice day here in Phoenix. Phoenix morning, surrounded by Maxes. Max on that uh, over there as well. And guess what? We are flying a Max today too. We got the lights on. So yeah, we're gonna take this Max uh, around the horn, right? Denver, over to Houston, back here to Phoenix. Your bags going on. So all new loaders. These bags, uh, they used to use these old school loaders. They got some new ones that are uh, much more efficient now. So this airplane's an ETOPS airplane. Looks like, who's it? No, I take that back. No, it's not an ETOPS airplane. So most of the uh, Maxes are ETOPS. I shouldn't say most. A lot of the Maxes are ETOPS, but this one happens not to be an ETOPS. Best way to figure that out is look at the uh, nose gear doors. It'll have ETOPS on there if it is. All right, that's it. Let's go up, get in the airplane. Bam. All right, let's see. We got that off, that off. Let's light out. Okay. All right, we finally got our paperwork. Release number two, which means something happened to release number one. Obviously. So release number two, take us hour 14 minutes. I'll show you guys. Uh, this is going to be important today, especially going to Denver. Denver is always, uh, Kind of one of those airports where if you don't like the weather wait five minutes because it will change the current weather let's see uh information mike nine miles half a mile freezing drizzle which is always lovely mist overcast 300 it went up 100 feet so that's nice uh 30 39 uh minus six Woo. hey 21 degrees down there okay so that's it right now. Um, Mike and I are going to get the airplane ready, brief up everything, talk about the approach down there, and uh, yeah, we may we may do a Cat Three, huh? Maybe. Maybe. I don't forget. I Just in case. So. That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. But uh, anyways, so Mike and I are going to brief it up, uh, talk about the weather on the route, and talk about departures, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll show you the clearance once it comes up. On our way to Denver. All right, y'all, we got the uh, clearance. Here we go. Uh, Mr. Bill the Uper, then his file. We'll climb to 8,000 feet. We got that up there. 192's departure. And we have uh, 4104, the squawk is down there. We just went over the uh, departure routing. It takes us to the north, to Uper, and then uh, 
we'll be yeah. on our way over to Denver. We did pull up that weather from before. Pull up Denver. Uh, yep, still Mike. So a half mile, freezing drizzle, and overcast 300 feet. So Captain Mike and I have talked about who's flying the lake. And because he's a captain, he's flying the lake. I don't trust her. No, he didn't trust me. <laughs> Anyways, well, Mike actually is the only one that has the Cat 3 approach with the HUD. So if we have to use the HUD, he's going to use that sucker right there. And basically, that's going to get us down to lower minimums. So we don't have to do it right now. It's over past 300 feet, and it's a half a mile. So visibility is always the uh, controlling factor on that. But if you really want to get into Denver and not have any surprises, it's always best to pull out your ace underneath your sleeve and... Uh, go ahead and get down on the uh, approach that does it the best, which would be the Cat 3. The only limitation on that is gonna be the winds. So we have a briefing card down here, which we'll pull out and we'll go over if, uh, if we are gonna do that Cat 3 approach. What it does is it gives us kind of a lot of, uh, not so much checklist items, but items that we have to review and it'll give us our weather that uh, keeps us legal to do the approach with the uh, crosswinds being kind of the big thing. Um, steady state crosswinds, 15 knots on the uh, Cat 3 approach with a peak uh, gust of 10 knots. So we don't have to memorize it, it's on our card. Uh, because, you know, obviously we don't do it very often and to make sure we're, we're safe, we have briefing cards and everything else. So when you guys are doing your approaches out in your uh, training devices or your airplane out there, um, you guys are preparing for doing stuff just like this. So it is the same in every airplane. We're just bigger and we fly a little bit faster. That's all it is. So anyways, um, we're gonna get ready. We're gonna blast off out of here. Unfortunately, we got a plane change in Denver, which, which really sucks because as we just talked about, the weather is not very fun out there. Luckily, I brought my jacket. So that's, uh, that's, that's a good part, but yeah. Um, it's kind of typical, right? We have a schedule of the airplane, but if the airplane is needed somewhere else, they'll pull your airplane, give you another airplane to fly the airplane around. And this airplane, obviously it's max, it's well valued. Um, it's very efficient. So instead of flying a lot of short legs, they're probably gonna put it on a little bit of a longer leg that makes the uh, company a little bit more money. So, hey, I can't blame them, right? Um, but I, I do love the max. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna get ready and we'll see you in Denver. We're here. Uh, a lot of de-icing over there, uh, as you can see. That's going to be actually our next gate. Um, unfortunately, we have a plane change here in uh, Denver. Shocking. But uh, yeah, you know, like I said, sometimes the uh, airplane, just like us, they could change us to go do a different flight that they need covered. Um, sometimes they want to move the airplane to another flight for a better economy or whatever is going on. So that's what's happening with our airplane. Um, fortunately, we're going from a max, a nice max, to the, uh, just the 737NG, so non-max airplane, but it's all good, we're flying, right? So, show you guys what we did, uh, came in on the T-Bar arrival, uh, just prior to, uh, Eldora, they vectored us off, we did vectors onto the ILS, we were gonna do the Cat 3, we ended up, uh, they had 6,000 RVR, so, uh, 1800 RVR is good enough for uh, the approach onto that. So that's what we did. We decided to audible off the Cat 3 because, uh, you know, with the Cat 3 approach, it's very, very, the tolerances are very tight, obviously, because you're going 50 feet off the ground on the approach. So uh, without I that, okay. Oh, cool. okay. So without that, um, you know, with it being, the uh, tolerances being tight, we don't typically do it unless we absolutely need it because it would be very embarrassing to have to do a go around uh, on a Cat 3 approach because you exceeded one of the tolerances and, and it wasn't that bad out. So uh, that's what we did. Mike did a really awesome job on the approach and landing. I kind of fumbled one of my call outs, but yeah, hey, uh, I'm, always, I'm always trying. We found, we found it. We did find it. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna uh, go get the other airplane ready, which again is coming to that gate. It is not there, but uh, 
should be there momentarily. So I'm gonna head out and go to that, grab my jacket too, because as you can see, there is a little bit of ice on the uh, windscreen. That's typically where it builds up. And then on the uh, nut, on the uh, windshield wiper nuts there. So uh, that's typically how we know the ice is coming and then we'll turn on the anti-ice and engine anti-ice. All right guys, see you at the next room. Okay guys, I made it. I did the walk around, it was absolutely freezing out there. Even though the ground doesn't show any snow, uh, trust me, with the ice on the airplane the way it is, uh, it is very cold outside. I'm not sure how you people from Denver do it, because it's cold. These Phoenix people that come in, we're, <laughs> we're just home, we're go home. Gonna, so cold. Um, it's really like 26 degrees outside. You guys are probably like, ah, geez. Yeah. Especially the you folks from UND up in uh, Grand Forks, you guys are like, yeah, this is a nice summer day. But uh, anyways, just getting to the airplane. Um, as you can see out there, they're doing a bunch of de-icing and there is a lineup for de-icing uh, as well. So, I mean, automatically thinking, okay, fuel, right? Are we gonna have enough fuel for a little bit of a delay to get to de-ice, to de-ice, and then get to the end of the runway? So that's where we're gonna review our uh, Dispatch release here. Uh, some of the stuff too, uh, on our comments, we've got 5G limits. So it's referring us to uh, an RBF, a read before fly that we have here on our iPad. And we'll talk a little bit more about the 5G, which uh, is the telecommunications, basically cell phone towers out there that are transmitting on uh, 5G frequency. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff in there, but basically what it means to us, we need to look it up, make sure uh, we understand what operations we can and can't do. Still boggles my mind that uh, that the FDC or you know the FCC, I guess it would be right. FDC. FCC. FCC. Um, it boggles my mind that 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 is implemented with no real coordination with the airline industry or flying industry in, in particular. But hey, <laughs> it is what it is. So we're gonna get this airplane ready. Uh, Start realigning the IRS's down there. And let's pull our flight plan down. We're on this side, you know, we pull up the route, so Mike and I can take a look at that. And that bing bong, whenever you see that dispatch message, could not find route, check inputs and try again. So when that happens, uh, usually they're working another release um, the releases come out, dispatch releases, this is two. So we had a one, now we're on to two. Maybe there's something else has changed. Um, you know, probably two was for the plane swap that we just had. There might be something else happening, so we can't get the route uh, currently because number one, we're kind of early uh, on this. And number two, they might be changing something uh, in our release that prohibits us from getting the route and, you know, initializing all that stuff. So. We'll wait on that. I'll get the rest of this stuff ready. Uh, what I can, we'll probably just take a look at the weather. Take a look at our uh, de-icing operation and getting that set up because that takes a little bit of time too. So check back in with you here in a second. The lineup is actually cleared out. So it looks like uh, yeah, it looks just like United it. is yeah. de-icing down there right now. So should be uh, good to go. Hour 52 minutes is going to be a little bit faster than usual. The thing down there, we got 5G limits at Houston, so we're going to review uh, that read before fly uh, as well. Here's our clearance FD7 to Dews and as filed, climb via the SID. We got uh, 37 to 10 minutes, 28 to 25 is departure, and uh, 1440 is down there. Top altitude 23,000 feet, ultimately going to 37,000 feet, so that's good. Here's the route of flight. Basically, straight there. <laughs> there is one uh, turbulence plot. It's up at 32,000 feet. So maybe a factor because uh, you know we are going to be descending into Houston. Right now, Houston's uh, pretty nice. Let's look at the weather. Uh, current Atis, gusty winds. They've got scattered at 3,000, and uh, they're using runway 22 down there. Uh, 80 degrees. Oh. 80 degrees down there it is it's cold here <laughs> anyways so that's uh that's the deal oh did you see that oh my goodness so the ice is coming off <laughs> we've got a piece of ice that just kind of fell down from the top and onto the windshield blades but anyways yeah it's it's icing down there 
So I'll show you guys uh, kind of, you know, we showed you the last uh, video on uh, some of the de-icing procedures. So I'll show you some of the things that we have to uh, help us determine the ice. So obviously uh, with the ATIS out there, we're calling a uh, half mile with frozen uh, drizzle. Uh, we'll update the ATIS here uh, really quick, but pull up this uh, hold over time calculator, which we have. It pulls up the uh, current ATIS. Let's refresh that, make sure we got the, the freshest one on there. Uh, yeah, it should be coming out. So this is the 19th day at uh, 17.53. That's about an hour ago. So it's gonna update. But anyways, we input all the data into here, um, including the uh, type and fuel brand. And where we get that is from our icing sheet here. So what that basically does is gives us all the information, tells us you know, how to establish contact, de-icing, whether we're engines running or not, and then the frequencies that we use once we get onto the de-ice pad and uh, figure all that stuff out. Once we get on there, we contact uh, Iceman and all that good stuff. But this is a bunch of information that we take from here. We plug it into here. It'll give us our holdover time. So 27 minutes to an hour and 12, 12 minutes. Um, obviously, we'll do a holdover uh, clean aircraft check after we get de-ice and before we take off, make sure the airplane's clean. We set timers, all that good stuff, and then we blast off. So uh, that's it. Uh, Mike and I are going to talk about the, uh, the departure. We've already briefed everything up, but just kind of go over some finer things. And then we're off to Houston and uh, the 80 degree weather over there. So uh, we'll see you guys in Houston here in a bit. All right, guys, we made it. <laughs> so what had happened was uh, there was a little bit of storm action uh, around Take this off and move that to here. Uh, but there's a bunch of storms right around Houston, um, hobby. So as you can see, they're moving off. This was what we were supposed to do, which is basically almost a, a direct shot here. Well, I'll pull up my Jep FD Pro, and that's actually what we did. So we boomeranged it, uh, went to, uh, I forget what that, uh, San Angelo, there you go. So uh, we're heading pretty much direct and then they rooted us off to San Angelo and then uh, over San Antonio and then over to Beller. So what was supposed to take us a little less than uh, what, two hours, I think? Stand by. Yeah. An hour and 52 minutes is what it was supposed to take us. And you can see our uh, flight time was uh, two hours and 22 minutes. So uh, really about 25 minutes or so, a little bit longer, but we were taking the same airplane on our way back to Phoenix. So uh, getting here delayed, we had an hour and a half on the ground anyway, same plane, doesn't really affect us too much, but you know, it's always people in the back, right? Passengers, so um, we did get here about 10 minutes overall late, right? Take that back, I think it was 20 minutes late. Yeah, we're supposed to be here at 25. Yeah, only so almost 30 minutes late. So, yeah, anyways, that's what happened to us. Uh, again, a lot of storms kind of heading through the south here, almost you know, stretching all the way almost into Ohio. So, um, this little bit, believe it or not, made us do a big roundabout to get there. So, it is what it is. That's what we got. We got one more to head back home. First off, uh, I'm gonna grab my meal. Uh, I did my own home meal planning this time. I didn't, uh, didn't send it out. Uh, didn't get my packages actually, but um, got some salmon. I know you guys are very, very interested in that. So I'm gonna go warm that up. All right, all right guys, we're here. Um, <laughs> another reroute central. Just show you guys what happened. Uh, we were supposed to go all the way down to Corpus over to, uh, Laughlin and then uh, on to El Paso. So originally we we're scheduled up the northern route, they changed us around to south, and then uh, they actually gave us a couple of shortcuts. So actually didn't make it uh, too bad. So three hours of block, two hours, 43 minutes of flying time. That is a wrap for this. Thank you, Mike, for uh, all the good Let's stuff. See you again. Mike's another super senior captain that just flies turns, so <laughs> I want to be him one day. So.
Anyways, hey, thanks guys. Uh, I'm gonna clean up and uh, get out because I have another turn tomorrow going to Cabo. So, uh, thanks again. We'll see you uh, next week.